In a rare scene of camaraderie, people across the country ventured outside on Monday of this week to stare at the sun and enjoy a rare solar eclipse. And despite reaching, uh, only reaching totality over a sliver of the entire country, a partial eclipse was visible to most people, and it was honestly really cool. I didn't realize it was happening until it was too late. I was like, wait, do we get to see it here in LA? And they're like, yeah, 10 a.m. I was like, well, it's 4 p.m. now. Uh, I was uh, uh, out and about, and uh, everyone stopped and was looking up, and uh, luckily most of those people did have their eclipse glasses yeah. on, and I was able to borrow some. And you didn't pickpocket any of them? I was stealing so much. Perfect pickpocketing yeah. up. Pickpocketing opportunity. Yeah, well, people were, they were all hanging out. They were talking with each other, enjoying this natural phenomenon. Uh, natural phenomenon? I would say uh, godlike phenomenon. Well, it was a stark reminder that the internet isn't real, and people are typically normal and cool as hell. But since this is a show on the internet about the internet, let's focus on the fact that a certain amount of the population has probably done irreparable harm to their eyeballs by staring directly into the sun without proper eye protection. What are you talking about? Trump did it. Yeah, much like happened. Donald Trump famously did seven yeah. years ago. His vision is still 2020. Uh, well, you got that right. Uh, and that obviously created a truly iconic image that will be studied for generations to a come. A really funny image that, of course, was ruined by being posted today by Hillary Clinton. Yes. Wow, what an idiot. That Donald Trump guy is such an idiot. Can you imagine how dumb the person that lost an election to him must be? Yeah. Damn. In terms of search results alone, screenshots of Google Trends started making the rounds, which showed significant spikes in searches for terms like, my eyes hurt, and why do my eyes hurt, with the term, my eyes, in all caps, trending on Twitter for a significant part of the day. There was plenty of funny misinformation online which attempted to convince conservatives that wearing eye protection to view the eclipse was actually just propaganda. Yeah, this is, uh, these are the woke glasses. You don't want to be caught dead yeah. in these things. Uh, one of our favorites was this post from Steve Monticelli from the Texas Observer who tweeted, don't stare directly into the eclipse is woke propaganda designed to prevent God-fearing red-blooded patriots from glimpsing the light of the Lord. <laughs> A well-written and well-executed joke that was then co-opted by someone from the Texas Young Republican Federation who, among their otherwise normal conservative posts, tweeted, don't stare directly into the eclipse is capitalist white supremacist propaganda invented to sell you eclipse glasses and transfer your wealth to the 1%. He's making a joke about... Uh how people post online, but it didn't go very well. It was a weird statement because one of the only ways that capitalism could truly fail American citizens on the day of a solar eclipse would be for some company to have cheaply produced eclipse glasses, sacrificing consumer safety in order to squeeze a few extra cents into their profit margins. Now, surely no company selling in store and through the country's largest online marketplace would sell eclipse glasses that could severely damage the vision of anyone unlucky enough to have purchased them, right? The State Department of Public Health is issuing a recall for certain types of eclipse glasses. They potentially fail to meet safety standards. People who have these other glasses should not use them during the eclipse as they could result in eye damage. Okay, so that's nice. Uh, especially considering that the recall notice went out during the eclipse. But <laughs> better late than never, this I guess. This is like when that Board Ape Yacht Club party happened and they put uh, UV lights up everywhere because they look cool yeah. and made everyone go blind. Uh huh. But yeah, it also provided a nice excuse for people who did stare directly into the sun because now they can just say they're only blind because they bought those, those eclipse glasses that were recalled. Like, yeah, I just searched for eclipse glasses on Amazon and I just... I, w w What's the difference? I just picked yeah. the cheapest ones. And, and let's be clear here as well. It's not going to render you completely blind. It's going to be fact, annoying. what it will do is make it so that you can see that eclipse every moment of yeah. every day of the rest of your life. Yeah, you'll, you'll be able to cherish that moment by reliving it constantly. The eclipse is just always there yeah. in your field of vision. I, Pretty I, cool, I think. I forgot about this way to view it. I know people do the pinhole thing, but... Uh, I was out and uh, through the trees, you could see all the crescent shapes yeah. on the ground. I didn't even have to look up. But, uh, maybe I snuck one or two just to, uh, yep, there's that dot in my yep. eye once again. Now, we, of course, got a few articles about the dip in solar power production, including one GOP senator from Wyoming, John Barrasso, who tweeted that the U.S. will lose more than 30 gigawatts of solar energy during today's total eclipse. A good reminder, the sun doesn't always shine, and solar power alone is not enough. But don't worry, Wyoming, 
oil, gas, and coal producers will continue to step up to keep the lights on across America. He then presumably, I guess, uh, shot a few rounds at the sun for good measure. Yeah. See that hole? Yeah. I put that hole there. That's right. Yeah. But speaking of bizarre takes on this event, Fox News had some interesting coverage during the day on Monday, which included awkward man-on-the-street interviews with people who really didn't seem interested in talking to Fox News. Mm-hmm. Are you excited for the eclipse? Are you in town for the eclipse? No, just, uh, just here for business. Do you think that President Biden is going to resign after the eclipse? Unlikely. Do you wish he would? No. I do. Don't tell anyone. Do you think there are people who are dumb enough to look at the sun? That, yes, 100%. The aliens are coming. Did you know that? Uh, With the eclipse, they're going to use that opportunity to land. (laughs) Yay, aliens! We have to say that now. Yay! (laughs) She's not as excited as I am. That's okay. Now, this part where she asks if someone is dumb enough to stare into the sun is so great simply because of how popular and widespread that image is of, of Trump doing exactly that. Yeah. It's the most iconic image ever of someone looking at an eclipse after being told not to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the rest of their coverage ranged from mindless chatter. It, you know what I like about it too, Jonathan? I feel that it's full circle on the word corona. Right. Because ah. we were all in the middle of the oh. coronavirus right. for you know over three years. To aligning this astrological anomaly to the border crisis. Yeah. Rare celestial event collides with a policy failure on the ground. The southern border will be directly in the path of totality today when the moon covers the sun for nearly four minutes. Uh, We are told that officials are bracing for higher traffic than usual, and that means a real opportunity for smugglers and cartels and migrants to come right in. Think of how many illegals with giant duffel bags full of fentanyl snuck across our border during those four minutes that the sun was hidden away by the moon. Yeah, so obviously the solar eclipse destroys green energy while also providing the perfect cover for criminals illegally entering the country. Yeah, I mean, I I will, will, everyone's everyone's gonna lose their mind when they figure out that night exists. It's gonna be a big problem. You're telling me there's like eight hours of this? It's crazy. That's gotta be, no, no Mm -hmm. way. Well, still, all of this stuff was pale in comparison to the conspiracies about the rapture and second coming of Christ that was absolutely going to happen when the eclipse reached totality over the United States. Did it? No. Mm. Well, I mean, Elliot, clearly anyone left on Earth, and more specifically anyone watching this video, was not chosen to ascend to heaven. That's fair. Now you're just stuck here with us, so get comfy. Yeah. And there's way too much biblical jargon to get into with these particular conspiracies, but basically Christians, and unsurprisingly Alex Jones, seem to think that because the eclipse is passing over some cities that are named after a biblical capital, it is a sign that God is angry at America, and the true believers will be called back to heaven, while Masons will perform rituals to bring about a new world order, or some something like that. Uh, it's wacky shit, and obviously nothing happened, so best to just keep ignoring these types of people. Hey, they were wrong this time, but... One of these days, they're gonna be right. Yeah. But actually, hold on, we can't ignore everyone because one woman in Florida claimed that she heard the voice of God who instructed her to go on a shooting spree during the eclipse. Sounds like something God would want. Especially for an American. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the Associated Press. Get out there and do (laughs) what you do best, shooting at each other. Uh, Here's the AP. A woman checked out of a Florida hotel and told staff that she was going on a God-directed shooting spree because of the solar eclipse then shot two drivers on Interstate 10 before being arrested and charged with attempted murder Monday, according to the Florida Highway Patrol. Talon Nichelle Celestine, 22, of Georgia, entered the highway 115 miles from the Alabama border in the Florida panhandle and headed west. Within five miles, she fired into a passing car several times, spraying auto glass and grazing the driver in the arm, the department said in a statement. She then fired at a second vehicle, hitting the driver in the neck. The driver was injured and treated at a hospital. Troopers stopped the woman after she drove for about 16 miles and found her with an AR-15 rifle and 9mm handgun. She was arrested and booked into the Holmes County Jail. She was charged with attempted murder, aggravated battery with a deadly weapon, and improper discharge of a firearm. What a great day for yeah. Definitely sounds like something God wanted you to do. Mm -hmm. That's that's sort of that's all. It's all his thing. The best prank was the uh, everyone leaving their clothes out on the ground. You go out there, you put your shoes there, 
That would have been your good. Your pants down, uh, especially like right in front of like a church or something. They're just like, no! Mm -hmm. I was left behind! Clearly yeah. someone else has been raptured. You've been left behind. There was also like a shot of a, a Bucky's gas station where like, uh, I would assume that everyone's just outside because they want to look at the eclipse. But uh, the narrative is that they went outside so that when they were called to heaven, uh, the roof of the Bucky's wouldn't be stopping their ascent. <laughs> so... So we would have let you into heaven, but you were indoors inside of that Bucky. You gotta be outside. I, God, yeah. I cannot simply pull you through that roof. That is beyond my capability. Well, they got all kinds of fire preventative stuff there. It makes it impossible for me to but bring you up. I'll, I'll try this. I'm gonna try. Someone in that Bucky's has gotta have a gun. So we'll have them. You must shoot a hole in the roof yeah. with your gun. Mm -hmm. All right, problem solved. Yes. See you in heaven. And uh, I, I, I don't know the validity of this, uh, but apparently. I mean, maybe you saw the video on Twitter, but uh, there was someone that did an eclipse with their balls, and apparently that made it onto Spanish television uh, on a news report. Wait, they were just what? aggregating clips of the eclipse, and uh, it's like, wow, look at that! And it literally, the light comes through, and it's just hairy, a hairy ball sack that was dipping in front of it. Oh my god! Uh, obviously, we can't show it, but uh, apparently that did run on <laughs> some wow. Spanish-speaking news uh, network. But moving on, here's a bit of news that we're sure the proprietors wish they could blame on the eclipse. That Board Ape Yacht Club fast food restaurant has officially closed its doors. No! Lasting actually way longer than any of us could have assumed. Yeah. But ultimately becoming yet another footnote in the history of crypto's most embarrassing moments. It's honestly kind of crazy how anything with Board Ape art or branding feels like, it's like a relic from the distant past. Yeah. Despite being the talk of the town, just like... Two years what, ago? Two or three years yeah. ago? Yeah. Now you see celebrities offloading their apes at painfully steep discounts. Just get it off, get it away from me. Yeah. Uh, board Ape Apparel is ending up in bargain bins around the world, and restaurants that are themed around the NFT project are being shuttered after a short, pointless existence, which started with customers who could buy food using the incredibly convoluted process of transferring crypto shit coins. Yeah. So here's Decrypt with more on the demise of the Bored Ape burger spot. After two years, Los Angeles-based restaurant Bored and Hungry is closing its doors, with the branding being taken over by the Hungry Dow, co-founder Andy Wynn said on Monday. While Wynn said goodbye to the Long Beach, California location, Wynn said reopening in the Los Angeles area was not out of the question. No, I'd say, <laughs> no, not happening. Uh, they, I love that it's just like, well, you know, nothing set in stone, anything mm -hmm. can happen. Um, why, we could open a Bored Ape shop right here. Yeah, mm. and then I'm gonna buy all those old 99 cent stores. I'm gonna They're all gonna be board ape stores. And I'm gonna change them to 0. .00000000099 BTC stores, yeah. and everyone's gonna love it. Yeah, 0.99 ape coin. Come in here and yeah, buy what you need. Quote: Currently, we are location hunting. No, you're not. We're told decrypt. <laughs> it depends on what we find that makes sense to the business model. Bored and hungry wasn't supposed to be a long-term project. Yeah, it was. Said. And it was taking our resources away from our other work. You don't have any other work. The experiment took off a lot crazier than we ever expected. No, it didn't. Bored and Hungry set itself apart from other local burger joints. Nope. Allowing customers to purchase their meals with the Ethereum and ApeCoin cryptocurrencies alongside traditional debit and credit cards. Uh, no, they didn't. With Bored Ape Yacht Club and Mutant Ape images adorning the walls, the crypto faithful were ecstatic to see the JPEG collection jump into the real world. Okay, yeah. The restaurant did, however, face an uphill battle in growing its clientele outside of Web3. Quote, Do you own any NFTs? Decrypt asked a customer who stopped by to check out the location in 2022. What's that? He responded. Yeah. Again, like this is just, when you get off the internet, nobody knows what the fuck anyone's talking there about. There are simply not enough people uh, who care about this stuff in the, the real world to justify a local brick-and-mortar business catering yeah. specifically to them. Especially in... And well, it's probably because of the commercial real estate cost. But, like, especially in Long Beach, it's not really known for being, like, a crypto hub. You yeah. assume that this would pop up in, like, Miami or maybe West L.A., like uh, Santa Monica or something. Yeah. But, yeah, Long Beach is a weird location. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, R.I.P. to a real one. Yeah. And almost certainly not coming back. But buckle up, because it's Elon time. Sorry. <laughs> Elon time! Yes, that's right. And he's back in the news because of, you guessed it, more lawsuits. Daddy like lawsuit. 
He loves a good lawsuit. And this one seems a little out of the ordinary because it appears as though he didn't want anyone to know about certain aspects of it that are extremely embarrassing. <laughs> Obviously strange for a guy who appears to love suing and being sued, but it makes a bit more sense when you realize that this lawsuit was related to Musk inaccurately suggesting that a Jewish man was a neo-Nazi and spreading that misinformation to his millions upon millions of followers, which obviously had a horrifically negative effect on the victim's life. Yeah. According to reporting from HuffPost, Elon did not want the deposition from this released. But they went ahead and released it anyway. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness. Here's from their reporting. The lawsuit against the billionaire, filed in October, alleges that Musk used his colossal social media platform to amplify a false far-right conspiracy theory linking 22-year-old Ben Brody to a brawl in Oregon between the neo-Nazi group Rose City Nationalists and the Proud Boys, a neo-fascist fight club. The brawl occurred during Oregon City's first Pride Night Fest, when both groups came to disrupt the event and spew anti-LGBTQ rhetoric. Brody wasn't even in the same state when the June 24th brawl occurred. But his world was turned upside down when far-right X accounts, magnified by Musk, falsely identified him as a member of Rose City Nationalists and an undercover federal agent, and posted his personal information online. Musk amplified the conspiracy theory repeatedly to his more than 180 million followers, suggesting Brody was a fresh-faced federal agent pretending to be a neo-Nazi in a false flag situation a phrase used to suggest a harmful event was deliberately set up to misrepresent a group or person. Brody said he and his family were forced to flee their home amid the fallout from Musk's posts. He's seeking more than $1 million in damages. The next court hearing is scheduled for April 22nd. On March 27th, Musk sat for a two-hour deposition with attorneys from both parties over Zoom. Following the testimony, Musk's lawyer, Alex Spiro, filed multiple emergency motions in an attempt to keep the deposition sealed. During his deposition, Musk admitted he has a limited understanding of the lawsuit against him, said he thought Brody's attorney was the one suing him, and revealed he did no research in determining whether Brody was involved in the brawl after seeing the accusations on X. Musk also made broader admissions about his failures with X, which has plummeted in value since his takeover in 2022, saying he may have done more to financially impair the social media site than help it. Musk also confirmed that he once used a burner account on X seemingly to roleplay as his toddler son. Okay, so there's that confirmation. That's yeah. a callback. Yeah, that was a completely bizarre story from a while back where he was cosplaying as a toddler on X. Replying to himself as a baby. Yeah, very weird. Yes, Elon was, uh, according to this deposition, uh, roleplaying as a, a baby on his own platform. Anyways, here's one of the crazier exchanges between Musk and the attorney, Mark Bankston, which is referenced in the Huffington Post reporting that we mentioned earlier. Uh, Elliot, you'll be Elon, I'll be Mark Bankston, who, by the way, we've mentioned this before, but it is the same lawyer who represented two of the Sandy Hook parents in their lawsuit against Alex Jones. So, seems to be a good lawyer. Knows his way around a defamation case. Defamation. Right. Here's the conversation from the deposition, and for, for clarity, Ben Brody, Ben Brody, is the misidentified victim of harassment. Mark Bankston is the lawyer, and the conversation starts with Elon speaking. I don't know Ben Body. You're aware Ben Brody is someone who's sued you, right? I think you're the one suing. Actually, Mr. Musk, I'm an attorney. Did you know that? I'm an attorney representing Mr. Brody. Yes, but many times I found that the actual plaintiff is the attorney. Okay, but that's just an assumption you're making, right? Like. You don't know anything about Ben Brody? I don't. Okay, you understand Ben Brody has filed a lawsuit against you. I, uh, in my opinion, you're the one filing the lawsuit. Uh, okay, you, you understand. Okay, let's make this an easier way. Yeah, so obviously a frustrating conversation for the attorney, but there's other statements from Musk that attempt to downplay his role in spreading misinformation. Like this section where he claims that it's not a big deal because... Only a million or so people actually saw it. Yeah, it was basically nothing. You do understand that the amount of people who saw this, who have viewed this, is equivalent to all 30 Major League Baseball stadiums filled to capacity? You wouldn't dispute that. I mean, we're talking over a million people. Yeah, that's actually, that may seem like a large number, but it is not compared to the fact, I believe there are something on the order of five to eight trillion views per year. So a million is really... Not a big deal? A hit or miss, yeah. Not a big deal that this went out to that many people. Correct. Uh, That's an interesting... Uh, 
Interesting defense on his part. Yeah, kind of undermines uh, well, his, his other claims about like views and organic traffic and whatnot. Yeah, when the views are good for me, they're very high. When they're bad for me, they're oh, incredibly low. Yeah. Also, uh, what I, what is a view actually? What is getting trillions of views? That's more. That's the whole like, site, I guess. It's like every person in the world looking at a post like a thousand times. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> people do be scrolling. It is just funny though that like. He's like, well, in the grand scheme of things, you know, this one post only got so- seen by so many people. Uh-huh. When, when if, you, if you zoom out and look at every post posted by everyone throughout an entire year, those get a lot more views than just my one post. It's like, it's just one drop in the bucket. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, and just to throw it on the pile, here's a conversation about how Elon didn't really care to vet the person whose false information he was highlighting. He simply refused to even do a cursory glance at the profile that shared the misinformation. Nor did he view any of their other posts to get an idea of how legitimate they may or may not be. Yeah, so this is like actually a constant thing where one of two things is true. Either Elon Musk uh, does actively follow a bunch of people who are like not even hiding the fact that they're like fucking racist, uh, fascist, nationalist, like uh, just overtly. Which is bad, mm-hmm. but I don't know if it's better or worse. The alternative, which is that he is just he's not even checking that. Just no. he sees one post that he agrees with or chuckles at and uh, follows, and then just starts posting everything else. That I mean, for his defense, he is creating plausible di- uh, deniability by saying that he has no fucking idea what he's retweeting or amplifying. Yeah, I saw it on a blog, dude. Yeah. Uh, here, this one starts with Elon. I don't think clicking on someone's profile is an effective way of assessing their credibility. What do you, what the fuck are you talking about? Also, Wait, uh, what? It kind of used to be, because yeah. there used to be a verification system that would, it, at the very least, you would say, someone is putting their name on the line by saying this. This is, like, insane. I, uh, it's wild that I apparently do, like, a thousand times the due diligence of Elon Musk. By just simply, A, looking at the bio. Yeah. And then... Hey, this post is crazy. Look at like 10 (laughs) other posts and be like, is this out of the ordinary or is this like a, is there a narrative trying to be pushed or is this person uh, a crank or like you can get a pretty good idea by scrolling a couple times. wild. Yeah. So he said, Elon said that and then the uh, other lawyer said, well, couldn't you click on their profile and take a quick look at their timeline and see if the things that they had been saying were things that might give red flags about reliability? Isn't that something you could do? Possibly, and that's sort of not a very reliable way. Sure, but I'm asking, that is something you could do. If, for instance, let's say that you clicked on Dr. Fresner's account and you saw that they were tweeting a bunch of really wacky, obviously false things. That might give someone pause about whether this person was reliable, correct? Yeah, you'd say that perhaps that would affect things. Do you know... It it is possible for people who are... Nobody's right all the time. Nobody's wrong all the time. Sure. So it's possible for some people to, you know, like once in a while, a conspiracy theorist is going to be right. Uh, And I guess he assumes that this one time, this was absolutely 100% the truth. Like, listen, I, when people call Elon Musk a fucking idiot, I'm always like, Okay, that's probably unfair. He's probably like pretty smart about certain things, but he he really he's been trying his best lately to change my mind about that. Yeah, because he sounds like a fucking idiot. Here. <laughs> yeah, this and also why uh, it was it's very apparent that they did not want this deposition to get out there because he comes across as just completely inept uh, and clueless. Yeah, no, every recorded conversation this man has yeah. is the most unhinged thing he's ever done. Mm-hmm. Like, that is consistently true over, especially, like, the last six months. Yeah. You get this man talking into a microphone, he's going to say some wild shit. Well, uh, RoboTaxi right around the corner. That's right. We're living on Mars by 2026. Yep. Get ready. I mean, we know that rich and powerful people slip their way out of things like this on a regular basis, but this attorney has a great track record with judgments so far, and Elon doesn't seem like he's doing himself any favors based on this deposition. So we're... Pretty optimistic about this one. Mm -hmm. Now, the next court hearing is scheduled for the 22nd, so right around the corner, we'll 
probably know more soon. Also, there's over 100 pages of this deposition, so if we find anything else that's especially weird within their remarks, we'll be sure to add them to this week's episode of Tech Newsday. But while we're on the topic of Musk and lawsuits and free speech and Musk digging his hole deeper by the day, Elon Musk is now being investigated by the Brazilian Supreme Court over his dissemination of fake news. Wait. Ironic. Other countries have different laws, and each country has their own laws. Boom. And if you operate a country, uh, a company that has international coverage, you, you need to yeah. account for those differences in laws. Who would have assumed that running a multinational social media company would be so difficult and I'm starting to maybe begin to understand why Twitter had offices <laughs> all across the world mm -hmm. instead of just letting Grok uh, run the company. Uh, we can, we'll probably get into that on Tech oh, News Day, but hey, uh, Grok, Grok, is, Grok just spreading misinformation on the timeline is Grok insane. Is, uh, Grok is off the chain. That's it, And that's another thing that gives Musk plausible deniability, because it's like, well, the AI said it. Why would yeah. the AI lie? It's just scraping from all the available data. And, Mr. Musk, that was your AI, correct? Uh, well. well. <laughs> <laughs> so you could, you could say that, yes, perhaps, but you also uh, couldn't say it. Yes, when you assume you make an ass out of you and me. Ha <laughs> ha. Objection. Uh, so here's the Associated Press. A crusading Brazilian Supreme Court justice has included Elon Musk as a target in an ongoing investigation over the dissemination of fake news and has opened a separate investigation into the U.S. business executive for alleged obstruction. In his decision, Justice Alexandre de Moraes noted that Musk on Saturday began waging a public disinformation campaign regarding the top court's actions, and that Musk continued the following day, most notably with comments that his social media company X would cease to comply with the court's orders to block certain accounts. Musk, the CEO of Tesla and SpaceX, who took over Twitter in late 2022, accused de Moraes of suppressing free speech and violating Brazil's constitution, and noted on X that users could seek to bypass any shutdown of the social media platform by using VPNs or virtual private networks. Musk will be investigated for alleged intentional criminal instrumentalization of X as part of an investigation into a network of people known as digital militias who allegedly spread defamatory fake news and threats against Supreme Court justices, according to the text of the decision. The new investigation will look into whether Musk engaged in obstruction, criminal organization, and incitement. He's a busy man, isn't he? He's going to be spending a Brazilian dollars defending himself in all these lawsuits. Mm -hmm. But enough about Musk and that eclipse. It's time to fuck the popcorn bucket. The Dune 2 popcorn bucket, that is. And according to a recent interview out of CinemaCon in Las Vegas, the chief content officer of AMC Theaters admitted that she was aware that people were trying to fuck this bucket. I mean, at this point, yeah, SNL had a, had a sketch about it. Yeah, but the, the fuckability was apparently never part of the marketing strategy. And side note, they, they literally can't admit that. Well, it's probably inadvertent. It was a wildly successful example of marketing. Yeah. If the popcorn bucket didn't look like something people could stick their dicks in, it wouldn't have gone and stayed viral for weeks on end. Yeah. This, you couldn't buy promotion like this. It was like, there's an old story about how Fago would send ICP Christmas cards, but they would never be able to acknowledge yeah. that they like support uh, ICP spraying Fago all over everyone. Yeah. Uh, anyways, behind the scenes, you can bet that everyone at AMC was loving all these sick little fucks joking about having sex with their plastic garbage. But here's the official statement on the subject from AMC exec Elizabeth Frank, who starts the conversation by hyping up the popcorn bucket memorabilia market in general, likening it to uh, bringing a t-shirt home from a concert. Some fans are collectors. It's a material part of our food and beverage business, but it's not the majority of it. It also makes the movies more fun. It's like going home from a concert with a t-shirt. There is a lot of creative energy from it. We continue to learn and evolve. We would never have imagined the Dune thing. We would have never created it knowing it would be celebrated or mocked. And she was like, are you getting these winks into the camera, into the recorder? Wink, wink. Put, some, put some emoticons in yeah. there. She also adds that having it mocked on SNL was a big moment, but acknowledges that you can't plan for that, saying, you couldn't make it happen if you wanted to. It wouldn't be fair to pull our creative talent aside to say, we hope it makes SNL. Okay, yeah, <laughs> because that would mean approaching your team and asking, could you make this bucket more fuckable? I know it wasn't AMC. I think it was like Cinemark or something did the uh, Slimer bucket for Ghostbusters, and it had a big fat ass. <laughs> Are you sure it wasn't Muncher? Oh, it might have been Muncher. 
It was green. Is Muncher oh, green? I, I think Muncher's, Muncher's blue, blue, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it, was, it, was, it was Slimer, and he had a big... He was pulling a wagon. Thick Slimer. <laughs> yeah, they were like, look, the Slimer bucket looks great, but like, how are we going to compete mm-hmm. with the Dune Sandworm? Why don't you give him like a voluptuous ass? Every popcorn bucket. He got a great ass! Every popcorn bucket should serve two purposes. Yeah. You know which ones. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, speaking of marketing, no sponsor for today's episode, but don't worry, because apparently someone has bought our ad sales network, and we work for Mr. Beast now. Uh, And that is mainly a joke, (laughs) but it was surreal, opening up our news feeds and seeing the following headline. Mr. Beast Challenge Agents Acquire Rooster Teeth Podcast Network. I mean, it's definitely a headline that was intentionally written to get as many views as possible because the actual story... Hold Mm. on, this is delicious. This is actually way better than I thought it would be. Oh, my God. Damn, Jimmy. It does melt in your mouth. Yeah, that's for American chocolate. Mmm. Pretty good. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, the Mm. headline was intentionally written to get the most views possible because the actual story is boring to (sighs) anyone that doesn't follow all this stuff. It's just... This company, Night Media, acquired The Roost. Night Media is a talent... Mmm! Damn, Jimmy! Night Media is a talent management company that happens to also represent Mr. Beast. And The Roost was Rooster Teeth's podcast ad sales network who worked with us. So now, I guess unless Mr. Beast personally tells them to drop us, we are equally as important as Mr. Beast. Or as we like to call him, Mr. Boss. Or simply, Sir. Yeah. God, he's... Can you believe this? Mm. I'm genuinely impressed. Mm. Oh, yeah. After the whole Mr. Beast burger thing, I'm going to finish mine. I'm going to eat the whole bar, all 190 calories of it. With more on this, here's Bloomberg. Warbar's Discovery, Inc. is selling the podcast business associated with its Rooster Teeth brand tonight. The talent management firm behind popular online creators like Mr. Beast and Kai Sinat. The sale follows Warner Brothers' decision to shut down the online video business of Rooster Teeth last month after failing to find a buyer. Finish your chocolate and then eat. I just love this chocolate. All right. Mm, okay, there we go. The Roost's distinctive brand identity, loyal no! and partner network, and mission to be the podcast network for the creators align seamlessly with Knight's overarching strategy. Reed Doucher, founder of Knight, said in an emailed statement, Knight is committed to maintaining the Roost's autonomy and integrity, ensuring it thrives independently within the Knight family. The Roost podcast network includes 47 original shows, and a majority of the team will remain on staff, including, hey, our friend, AJ Feliciano, the head of the network, according to the statement. And yeah, very happy for them. Uh, as for what this means for us, probably nothing. I, mean, I hope I get some more of these out of this. This is a damn good chocolate. We are joking about the Mr. Beast thing. Folks. I'm genu- like, I, I have seen the light. I stared into it that does, eclipse it and I went and the, uh, It's reminiscent of like the Cadbury stuff. It's a little more uh, European tasting than I would ima- have imagined. I mean, it's definitely more American because this is milk chocolate. Yeah. It tastes like what American chocolate used to taste like before it went woke. Well, it's because they had to like boil the milk so it wouldn't poison people. Yeah. Gave it that I'm getting the shit all in my fingers, which is a good sign. Yeah. Try getting a fucking Hershey's bar all over your fingers. Won't happen. Impossible. Uh, hopefully we do get more sponsorship lined up. Be, uh, mm. But that's all behind the scenes stuff. No one has ever or will ever instruct us on what to cover, what to say, or anything like that. But yeah, at least the roost will continue in some form. And we look forward to what we assume is a lifetime supply of Feastables. Uh, in the meantime, no sponsors. Although we do have some later in the week. Go down to your local 7-Eleven no, and pick up, <laughs> this pick is up supposed a to be a, Just a fun joke. And if you see them, if they're all fucked up and just <laughs> all over the place, clean them up. Make sure you front them. Make them look nice. Come on. If we were on their radar before, we certainly you know, are now. A rising tide lifts all ships. And the more money Mr. Beast makes off of these festivals, the better things are going to work out for us. Anyway, There's no coupon code needed. It's already priced great. And it's already available at your local 7-Eleven. So there you go. It's pretty good. No, no actual sponsors... No, no there sponsor will, needed. There will be some later in the week, which is a great feeling, but feel free to smash that join button if you want to support the show, or just be a nice friend and lovingly tap the like button, leave a comment, reply to a comment, or they're popping up over here. Check out our most recent videos, because yeah. we got one about the most aggravating <laughs> form of identity theft you could imagine. Yep. And then also Kanye getting real fucking mad and then turning into Mario for some reason. 
another life. I'm going to go finish this chocolate. We'll see you soon. Bye. <coughs>